Welcome to another episode of Seco Talks. Today, high pressure gas quenching and oil quenching. We will try to find the differences, benefits and uh, other aspects of these two methods of quenching and hardening. My name is Adam Adamek and together with Marcin Długozima, we will try to find many answers. Marcin, I have many times questions from our partners. Why, where, when to choose gas or when to choose oil? What is the most key factor in choosing the proper quenching method? Yeah, so thank you for having me here, Adam. So at the beginning, we have to distinguish these two methods, gas quenching and oil quenching. Yes. So in a gas quenching, we use inert gas. So it can be argon, it can be nitrogen. And in general, we can say that gas quenching is a bit slower than oil quenching. So two, the po two most popular gases, argon and nitrogen. Yes. In industrial conditions, the most popular nitrogen because of price and efficiency. Yes. This is one thing. Yes. And the, the next? And the next one, if you also in a gas quenching, if you need a higher speed, you can also use helium, for example, or even hydrogen. Okay. But you can remember that these gases are quite as expensive. Yes. So even compared to oil, uh, it, uh, quenching speed will be similar, but uh, it will be more expensive. More expensive, but with different results. But the question still remains. When or what is the factor yeah. when we choose oil or when we can use uh, gas? Yeah, this is the hardenability problem in the material. So uh, the hardenability is a uh, ability to form martensitic structure in the okay. seal. So there is a uh, different factors Let's that for can walk. <laughs> influence uh, the hardenability of material. And in a case of steel, we have a chemical composition. Yes. So this the more is, alloys, the better or the higher hardenability. Yes, the, the more alloying elements in a material, the higher the hardenability is. But also there is a carbon in the steels and carbon is a main factor that increases the hardenability also. And then we have different factors also, like uh, austenite grain size. It also influences hardenability of material. And also the mm, carbides and nitrites. If there are disso not dissolved carbides or nitrites in the material, in the matrix, it will also decrease the hardenability of the steel. There is one interesting point in terms of hardenability. I know from my, ex my past experience mm -hmm. that hardenability is just the one uh, element, but also I know that the same steel with the same chemical composition yeah. can have different hardenability depends on... Yeah, yeah. there is something which is called hardenability band. Yeah. So even if a standard has a variety of some chemical... Range? Yeah, some range of chemical composition of one grade, so you can have a bottom range of this band or top range of this band, and it will change quite much uh, so hardenability. Can we recommend always to order steel with the certificate yes? Yes. about the exact hardenability of this batch? Yes, yes. This is very popular in aviation industry, for example. Yes, to have a certified material, it is always helpful. Yeah. Okay. Can you give some examples of steels with? enough hardenability to make a high pressure gas quenching? Yeah, in case of high pressure gas quenching, for example, two steels are a good example. Two so, steels? Yeah, like H13, yeah. H11, for example. So that's a typical die casting steels, for example. Okay. Uh, even How about cold work tool steels? Cold work tool steels are a bit difficult because there are some examples that can be hardened in gas. Okay, so, so there is always need to have yeah. a competent person like you yeah. to suggest which method will be better. Yeah, yeah. But it's always good to check the uh, transformation temperature diagram, which it, st it still has, and you can check the, mm, okay. the transfer. You mentioned about tool steels, and how about the steels dedicated for carburizing? Do you, see, do you have any examples with steels that are sometimes on the border in uh, terms of using oil quenching or gas quenching? Yeah, in case of European standards, for example, we have something like 16 manganium chromium 5 steel or 20 chromium uh -huh. manganium 5 steel. 
and it's uh, something between. It depends on the cross section. So with a uh, with a cross section which is small, like few millimeters, for example, like 10 millimeters, even yeah. 20, you can harden this steel in uh, gas. gas. But then, if you have bigger cross section, you will have to use oil for that steel. Perfect, Marcin. Let's go for a short walk, and then we can continue the next subject. Of course. Let's go. Okay, Marcin, quenching. If we have quenching in oil, in oil, maybe more traditional technology, we have three phases. The first is the vapor phase, boiling phase, and convection phase. So during the one process of hardening, we have three different quenching speed, and it means that we can obtain more, we can expect some deformations, more than in gas. And if you can say something more about the specific of the gas quenching in high pressure. Yes, in case of gas quenching, uh, we can be more precise in a control of cooling speed. In a single chamber furnace, in for In a single example. chamber oh. furnace, for example, yes. because we have different parameters that we can use. So what parameters we play? Yeah, so we are playing with a pressure, okay. with a blower speed. From up to which pressure? From like zero, I would say, uh, over pressure. To okay. <laughs> to like uh, 25 even bars yes. in our case. But in standard conditions in industry, 10, 15 bar is yeah. more than enough for typical steels. Yes. But we can also technically, we can go higher up to 25 bar yes, of nitrogen, right. for yes. example. Yes. So the motor, the, the blower speed also has a big impact of the quenching blower speed. Blower speed, I mean motor power yes. and motor rotation. Yes. So at the end, gas velocity. Yeah. Yeah, the higher the gas velocity, the quicker the, the heat exchange will be. I tell you, many times I have discussions with different people and people uh, has a tendency to compare 5 bar furnace to 5 bar furnace or 10, by fa 10 bar furnace to 10 bar furnace. But yeah. the nozzle, number of the nozzles or generally the quenching pattern, yeah. motor, everything uh, matters mm -hmm. at, yeah. or influence the quenching yeah. speed, yes? Yes, and then so pressure, we, yeah. motor, and even if design. This, yeah, if these two factors are the same, we also have the size of the chamber, which yes. also has an influence of the quenching speed, and also the direction of the flow of the gases. Of so it can be directional cooling, for example, which is very good for a very thin cross sections, like yes. knives, for example. Mm -hmm. So then top to bottom uh, quenching is the best for this kind okay. of solutions. And everything is to control Better, in a better way, the quenching in terms of minimizing deformations. Yes, yes, the deformation can be better controlled in the gas quenching. Yeah. Okay, and this is something that we talk about gas quenching. If we talk about oil quenching, can we control any parameters? Yeah, we, we can, but it's not that wide that in a gas quenching, we can control the temperature of the oil okay. before the quenching starts. So we can adjust a little bit the velocity of oil also. And then we have a mixer speed, for example. So the mixer speed also has an influence. The, the higher the flow is, the, the quicker the so heat exchanges. The, the oil, it means mixer speed. It means there is never a situation that the oil is in static uh, position. Yes, yeah. especially in a dense batches, it has a big influence. So there, there should be a flow between the parts. Yeah. If we try to compare quenching speed in the oil quench furnace and high pressure gas quench furnace, how do mm. you see it? Yeah, so in case of heat transfer coefficient, for example, uh, in a gas quenching with nitrogen, we can achieve, we can be from like zero even to 1000. And in case of an oil, there is... So heat transfer coefficient is a parameter we measure in every furnace to, to measure quenching Ability. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can say that. Like this in the way. car acceleration from zero to 100 kilometer per hour in how many seconds? So, so heat transfer coefficient, the higher, the faster the furnace in quenching. Yes, yes, that's right. And in case of oil, I think we can start from like maybe 800 or 1000 even. Mm -hmm. So we cannot achieve lower heat transfer coefficient. And that's why for example, deformation are always bigger in the oil. Can quenching. we achieve the same quenching speed in gas like in an oil? Right now, for slower oils, we have the solution. Like, for example, in a 4D quench chamber, when we use very small uh, volume of the chamber okay. and a high pressure gas 
like nitrogen, we can achieve um, quenching speed compared to the slower oils. Okay. So yeah, right now it's, it's possible. Imagine the situation, you have the same quenching speed in gas and the same in oil. What will you choose? What, what benefits do you see in gas and, and in oil? Yeah, if there is a possibility to choose and the material allows to choose it, it will be always gas quenching. Why? Because it's cleaner. For, okay. This is the first point. After there is, quenching, there is no need to remove yeah, the oil. Yeah, there is no need to remove yes. the oil, so there is no contamination. The second thing is there is no oxidation, because it's possible to get some oxides on the, mm -hmm. on the surface after the oil quenching. It's more environmental friendly, and that's, that's for sure, because oil also uh, degradates during the, the time. Yes. So, so from the time to time, you have to check the properties of the oil in the furnace to check if the quenching uh, ability is still the same. So this is uh, uh, the problem also. I think even from the investment point of view, you have simple furnace in gas quench. It's a single chamber gas yes. uh, vacuum furnace, not a double or three chamber. Yeah. But for some cases, if there is a lower hardenability, there is no other way like to use the oil. Yes. But your winner today is gas quench. Yes, that's process. right. That's right. Okay, I'm interested if um, our guests uh, <laughs> have some other preferences. Marcin, I think that for today is more than enough. Maybe some of the basic level, maybe some more sophisticated knowledge. I deeply thank you for your open. Thank you. That you are open for sharing your experience. So thank you for today, for today's episode of Seco Talks. And I hope you will follow us for the next. Thank you, Marcin. Thank you. Trochę się zamieszałem na końcu, ale ja to też, ale...